Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Ted Flint. With us today, Assemblyman Pete Lopez. Sir. Pete serves the 127th Assembly District, which includes the Mid-Hudson, Northern Catskills, and the Southern Tier. Quite a large swath a of big, area. It is yeah. a big swath of area. Yes, sir. Now and that you mentioned it. Nice to have you. <laughs> good to see you. We're, you know, this I is like time, picking on you. I can't help That's all right. It's, it's an easy <laughs> target, man. especially in the, in the morning. You know, yes. Yes. Well, you were a little sleepy this morning. morning. Shows you made it a little too easy yeah. on you. Let's, uh, this is the time of year where, yeah, I guess the legislature, I guess, is somewhat relieved. You get that sense that the budget is behind us now. The, uh, you get some major legislative battles ahead, and we'll get into those as the program. That's true. Uh, fair I, assessment? I, it is a fair assessment, and I would say, by, by extension, I would say, in some part, the, the, the broader community is relieved to see a budget on time, and certainly there's any number of issues within the budget uh, that, that people are either satisfied with or, or frustrated by. But I would say, in, in the main, people are, are saying, hmm, budget was on time. So, so that's half of the equation. And, and, and so legislature relieved, public relieved to some part to know that at, at least the budget is a known quantity and is in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, $132.5 billion. Right. Uh, education funding redu reduced somewhat. Right. There was some restoration right. to the funds. You're, I'll, I'll have you comment on the restoration or education portion of the budget. Well, and again, I, I would say overall, the major premise was putting everything in the context of, of a $10 billion deficit and a proposed or, or, or purported $15 billion deficit next year. So yeah. the governor's stated premise, and we, we've talked about this a little bit before, was to stabilize the budget now. And, and in previous years, if, if you recall, we had a budget where taxes and, and thresholds were set but revenues were not materializing, but the expenditures were occurring. So we had for schools and for not-for-profits and contractors, anyone working with, with uh, receipt of state money, you had monies being held up and, and chaos re resulting as people were trying to make payroll, trying to complete works that they were uh, under contract to do. And, and so the governor's premise was we can't operate this way. So we need to stabilize and at least ensure that, that monies are there and, and that expenditures match known revenues. Mm -hmm. so, so that was the big piece. Education, very deep cuts, deeper than I would have liked to see, to be honest. The other piece that's missing what was a as cuts were made and, and changes were made to, to various line items for housing, for senior citizens, you name it, mm -hmm. we're still missing the relief piece. And, and, and that's, that's what's going to allow schools and local governments and others to, to stay within their budget if they're not being forced by unfunded or underfunded mandates, just to name a couple of things that are driving costs. Little discussions about pensions, discussions about um, all those things that, that, that drive the cost of our organizations, that hasn't been attended to yet. Yeah. So, so brief respite with the budget, um, a, a short denouement, if you would say, a little, a little um, short rest. A little but short. really, things will pick up again in, in short order, very quickly. After the break is the speculation. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, and, and, and quiet till then. Yeah, and, and, and it's Easter interesting break. that that should happen because, really, we should be all hands on deck. We should be moving aggressively to, to say, okay, let's look at those things that are driving costs. Let's put coalitions together. Let's have broad-based discussion. I really don't see the, the wisdom in laying back because all that means is, is crisis management, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with, with uh, symptoms rather than root causes. And to me, that's, that's what got us here to begin with. And that's it's what we've done every year here. Since. And, and that's, you know, the big crush of activity in June. That's, yeah. You know, it just never seems yeah, to end. And, and that's the way this place operates. And, and understandably, for, for any of us, I feel like a field medic. I have so many needs. There are so many issues in the community. I have to attend to the person who's injured the most, who's uh, suffering the most, whose case is most urgent. And, and it's a constant case of triage. And in a broader spectrum, that's the case here in Albany with any number of issues. But, but there still has to be some forward thought and, and some proactive effort. Can't all be sitting there with your catcher's mitt out waiting for something to come in. There's got to be a proactive stance that allows us to anticipate and, and bring coalitions together so that we can head some of this off. And, and, and to be honest... Not only is it prudent fiscally and, and, and from, a, from a policy standpoint, it's also more humane b because people are not caught in the crossfires and, and, and pushed into positions where, where, there, where it's crisis management. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's as humane as it is wise to engage. Mm -hmm. So laying back, in my mind, is a waste of, of human capital, a waste yeah. of collective wisdom. 
uh, we're, we're, we're smarter than that. On that note. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I won't say anything. You're smarter than that. No, I'm saying we are, collectively. <laughs> yeah, we are. Right. Let's get, that's know, a I, good segue to It is, the, with the budget piece. That's, your comments that's what floor. I was hoping. Sounds your good. comments of the floor about a week ago on the yes, budget, sir. and uh, we'll take a look at that, and we'll come back and comment further with Assemblyman Pete Lopez. Thank you, Tim. This is very painful for all of us. But what what's, has not yet been said is where do we go from here, and what do we do from here? And how do we reinvent government? How do we right size? How do we build our economy so that we're not solely relying on a millionaire's tax or on, on any new revenue source per se to be a game changer? What are we doing collectively to help our schools be more efficient? What are we doing collectively to give them more tools so they can make local decisions? What are we doing collectively to build our economy? And that really needs to be stated and that really needs to resonate upstate, downstate, rural, suburban, cities because that's really what's going to change that's going to be the game changer our hearts and minds willing working together to change this state and make it more sustainable and build the economy so i will be voting in support of this measure i share my my colleagues concern about our prisons as well and we need to be focused on many different techniques and strategies rather than just going to a default position and there's a whole broad spectrum there that we need to address of crime and corrections building economies changing changing people's lives. So I will be voting in the affirmative. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Peter Lopez in the affirmative. All right. And you have a couple of uh, education forums, I guess, at the Cobble Skill and uh, where else in Greene County? Uh, actually, we've held one. Uh, we've held two. Uh, and just to, to step back a second, uh, on many of these issues, and back to the budget being proactive, we've seen this coming. It's not new news, whether, whether it was notices from our former Governor Patterson or any accounting in the press about the recession and its impacts. So a, a year ago, actually last August, I, I scheduled a series of public forums on education. And the whole premise was, how do we arrive at, at meeting the twin goals of quality, affordable education? And, and what drove me to that, and it wasn't anyone that pushed me per se, but what drove me to that was watching over the successive years, the last two years, polarization on the issue. And, and the only common ground found was, was this one very innocuous reform measure called the Paperwork Reduction Act. And, and to, to, to state that in front of, of an audience that deals with education, um, the practitioners, administrators, faculty, staff, you, you invariably get snickers from them because they know how inconsequential it is given the big picture. So my premise was, okay, folks, you all come. Grandmas, grandpas, business people, farmers, teachers, come and talk to us about where we can find common ground on reforming education to meet those twin goals. So we held a forum in, at Unadilla Valley in, in the Shenango County area. Uh, it's kind of the tri-county, Delaware, Shenango, and Otsego. We held one in northern Catskills in Cobleskill, and then one mid-Hudson at Catskill Central School picking up Columbia, Ulster, Green. From there issued an invitation in the same notice for, for the uh, public hearing. By the way, I'd like to develop working committees with a cross-section of all those parties I just named. So we have a real-world uh, reflection. And, and my sense is when I put working groups together, I, I'm looking, I, I use the term constructive tension. I want groups coming from different perspectives, different worldviews, different philosophies, and, and we get it out of our systems. We, we respectfully push each other in, in that closed session recognizing that when we arrive at a, some degree of consensus, hopefully it's more reflective of the real world. It's not a, it's not a rubber stamp. It's not a group think mm -hmm. exercise. So just to, to fast forward, a uh, week and a half ago, we held the, the first uh, session in Cobleskill. Uh, same day, we held one in Unadilla Valley. Mm -hmm. And this coming Saturday, uh, on the 9th, we have the first session in Catskill. And I, I can tell you thus far, the sessions have been very productive. I'll have some more detail on, on the findings. But I, I, what I did find, uh, again, a lot of venting, and we have to give people room to maneuver, state sure. their positions. Yep. But I did find a willingness of the collective community to, to come together and begin to really focus on key issues. And, and I, I was stunned at the, at the productivity of the session. What I did also, as we sent the notices out, I sent a letter to the Business Council, I sent a letter to NYSET. I sent a letter to the Farm Bureau, School Boards Association, Superintendents Association, and said, hey, just so you know, we're doing this exercise, and it's not just an exercise. It's a grassroots, um, consensus-driven process. And did they respond? We, we have. We had some initial interest. 
I, I've invited them to attend the sessions. I'm going to ramp it up a little bit and say, hey, just so you know, folks, when we finish, my goal is to present this to you and to my colleagues and say, look, here's what people in our homes and, 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 and communities can agree on. Why can't we? Well, you said that you're looking for common ground. Correct. What kinds of things did you hear from them? Well, for example, and there's a heavy emphasis, particularly in rural schools, uh, which is much of what I represent. We have some suburban. Yeah. But there's, there's a, a particular emphasis on, on shared services, on uh, taking, uh, as, a, as, a, as contrasted with actual merger of schools, looking at sharing administrative services, looking at possibly merging um, uh, bus and transportation services between schools and, and local governments. Use of technology helped a school in Delaware County, Franklin mm -hmm. Central, get a distance learning lab. I've realized that a similarly sized school in Columbia County in my district, Germantown, doesn't have a distance learning lab. So they, they don't have the ability to do advanced placement or enrichment or foreign language. Um, so, so technology, shared services. We looked a little bit at pension issues. We started to look at that a little bit. Uh, there were some Starting to dig into some other issues, uh, we talked a little bit about lottery, and I'm doing some research on lottery funding. So we, yeah, we're yeah. running long So time. there's a lot, but I'll come back with we'll more. Follow up on I'll that, give sure. you the exact uh, blow by blow as we go through the process. All right. Suffice it to say, round one, they were happy. They Successful. want to do a second round. Very good. It's always good yeah. to hear. Let's talk about. The, well, I actually have an introduction. Uh, delegates from from China. Sure. And some visitors from the Tech Valley. Right. We'll look at that, and then we'll follow up, and we'll close things out. Sounds good. All right. Sound good. Thank you. Thanks, Assemblyman yeah. Pete Lopez. We're back. Yeah. I'd like to join Mr. Canister in welcoming our delegation from China and also highlighting the, the hosts uh, who are here in support of the delegation and Tech Valley. We certainly have a, a broad impact of this program, and I think many of us recognize the, the critical nature of giving more flexibility in our public education system to accommodate emerging technology and trends. We have with us, uh, I have two individuals from uh, actually my hometown, uh, Mr. Brian Sherman, who's the superintendent of schools at Schoharie Central School, and Kate Burdan, who's a young student at Tech Valley, um, actually a, a dear friend of the family, and uh, very much, uh, very much, in strong support of that program. So, Mr. Speaker, if we could ask that they be acknowledged and recognized in the chamber as well. Gladly, Mr. Lopez. Uh, we welcome you to the chambers. We extend the courtesies of the floor to you. We welcome this distinguished group of individuals from Tech Valley High School and from China. It's a long way from China to here, and I'm sure that uh, you have a lot to see, and I'm sure you have seen a lot. On behalf of Mr. Canistreri, on behalf of Mr. Peter Lopez, on behalf of the speaker and all my colleagues, welcome to the floor, enjoy the privileges of the floor, and come back real soon. Thank you for being with us here today. All right, Pete, tell us, just talk about the, the importance of Tech Valley and what that does. Well, uh, again, Tech Valley is an effort to try to concentrate uh, math, science, uh, more rigorous academics in, on one campus and, and provide some accelerated uh, educational opportunities. So students are actually chosen uh, at lottery, I believe, uh, from, from area schools in the vicinity and are put into programs um, focusing on engineering, focusing on chemistry, focusing on, on again, uh, heavily weighted technology-based uh, education. Uh, interesting contrast, those Chinese students are, are way ahead of us in many ways. And I can tell you, yeah. uh, I, I have friends who, who work at a college, uh, many of the students from China have our, our freshman calculus in ninth grade, college freshman calculus. So, that so that, that's the market contrast, and that's where we need to catch up. Uh, we'll, we'll follow up on that. Yes. That's a great topic. Yes. All right, very good. Pete Lopez, thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining Take us care. on this edition of Assembly Calendar. We've got to run. We'll see you soon. I'm Ted Flint.